Hey, what's up? How's it going, everyone? If you missed the investor call for Humble or TSNP, uh, I got you covered. I got some notes here. So I'm gonna be just, you know, basically giving you a summary of what it was and what the biggest takeaways are from it. So basically we started off and we had an intro by George Sharp, who if you don't know, he's the one who helped facilitate this merger. Um, he's definitely someone who is credible in terms of OTC because he's always exposing the bad companies and the fact that he is not exposing this one, but is, you know, talking about how good it is should be a sign that, you know, this is, a bigger deal than a lot of people are probably realizing. Um, and he says that the merger went great uh, and he hopes that this will bring credibility overall to the OTC markets because if you talk to someone about the OTC markets, like most people think it's a scam, you know, penny stocks, oh, they're so, they're so trash, like all the companies there are bad. Well, it turns out that this might not actually be the case and this company here might be the first OTC stock that ever becomes insanely super credible. Um, and so they put on the, uh, the CEO, George Foote, and he says that Humble is currently an early stage tech startup. You know, if you think back to like Amazon in the 2000s or whatever, like when they're still working in those, those tiny offices. Um, and his vision for this company is absolutely massive. And he says that he thinks this could be one of the first blue chip uh, tech stocks that are built on Zoom. And he really has an incredible team here. Um, I'll put a picture up of some of the people, but I mean, it's, it's absolutely insane the amount of I guess, credentials that his team has. And he's hired people from pretty much every major company you can think of. So all the experience necessary is there to really make this company take off. Um, yeah, so let's keep going down. Yeah, so he had a lot of different options in terms of what he could have done, but he ended up going OTC instead of, you know, going straight NASDAQ because that can take up to seven years or opening like a blockchain um, for the company itself. Uh, and his vision for the company is basically Web3, where people not only, you know, write data and are able to, you know, comment and interact, but they're actually able to transact over the web. And he, he believes that is the future of the internet. And he thinks this company could be the pioneer for that. And I think it's honestly a pretty cool idea. And I am very, um, what's the word, I guess, excited. I'm excited, you know, about, about what it's going to bring, the interconnectedness and the ability to easily transfer, transfer things over the internet. Um, so it's just going to keep going from there. His idea for Humble is, he said he talked about, basically the fact that Netflix um, or the App Store are kind of what they want to model the company on. So in terms of that, like the App Store has its own apps, um, Netflix has its own production, but they also are a company that likes to take the best from other people and also have it on their own platform. And Humble plans on doing the same thing. So they plan on owning their own technology that's really good, but also having other partnerships that facilitate the application and make sure that it's, its use is as, as useful and as widespread to as many consumers as possible. He says they plan to roll out the mobile app this year um, and expand very quickly through partners. He says the company is very good. Its strengths are you know, branding, the team, the tech, the product, the market, the fit, all of that stuff is absolutely killer. The one thing that they wanna make sure they get in line is um, you know, the market funding, which is gonna be done through the stock, uh, I'm, I'm fairly certain. So um, just look out for that. And I think in general, you know, that, that's, that's the best future case for this company is they're able to get everything in line with the stock and you do, do all the releases that they need to get the funding that they need to build this tech company. Because tech companies take a lot of money to start up. Like Snapchat still loses, I don't even know, like hundreds of millions a quarter. Um, so, you know, we shouldn't expect this company to be profitable off the bat because they're gonna be focused on expanding rapidly and making sure that they're doing everything according to regulations. And that was one of the big things, the big things that he emphasized. He emphasized that they don't want to sprint before they crawl or, you know, walk. They wanna make sure that they do everything 100% correctly so that they can have this be, you know, a massive company in the future and they don't wanna violate any regulations now that would you know, put them in the position to not be able to do that later. So it's very important for them, the longevity of this company, the longevity of the technology, and they wanna make sure they do everything the right way, which as an investor is something that is extremely reassuring for the long term because you don't wanna invest in a company that's just trying to get quick profits for themselves, you know, raise a ton of money and then they're gonna do stuff that's gonna get them sued and ultimately the, share, the shareholders lose all their value. Like you don't want that obviously. Um, let's see. Yeah, so th there's a lot of very cool features um, that Humble is talking about. Uh, but basically, the main aspect of the company that you need to know is the fact that there's so many countries where they are mostly cash or they, they're not digitally connected yet. And he believes by 2030, I think all people are going to have to have some type of, you know, mobile wallet. 
and the consumers are just going to need that. The, the world is becoming more and more technology based and there's a ton of opportunities down, especially in Latin America right now. That's I think where they're, they're focusing primarily, but I mean, obviously there, there's, there's people worldwide working on this stuff. Um, he gave one example of uh, their goal was to get 100 merchants in Mexico to sign up um, within a week and they got 300 in three days just because the product was so great. The vision for the app that he had was incredible and uh, it was honestly a pleasure to watch him talk about it because there's not really one app that does everything related to transacting online. Like if you are, you know, I, I don't know, if, you, if you're looking for somewhere to eat, you might have Google to find food near you, but then you might have to go to Yelp to be able to you know, figure out the reviews, see if it's a good place to eat, but then you might go to DoorDash to have it picked up to you, and then you might have to you know, pay with cash or tip your driver uh, over Venmo or something if you don't wanna pay through the app. Like, you need a lot of different apps to do all that, and uh, Humble is working on having all of those things under one roof, which I think is a really cool concept. Um, another thing that they talked about is the fact that if you are in these Latin American countries and you're you know, a store owner or any type of business person, your currencies in relation to the US dollar can drop like you know, 25%, which is not something that you want, obviously, if you're going long term. And they have the ability for this US dollar stable coin, which is you can transfer your money to that and then no matter what happens to your currency, your money's gonna stay you know, flat relative to the US dollar and then you can transfer it back instantly when you need to which I think is a really cool concept. And if you were you know, transacting in different currencies but didn't wanna lose it, this is a great way of protecting yourself and making sure that overall you're not gonna lose your money. Like, in, is it Venezuela that had like 100,000% inflation? I, that's just, it's crazy, man. So we don't have that concept in the US as much because we have inflation, but typically speaking, the US dollar is one of the, the, the biggest pegged currencies that others are based off of. Um, and so we don't really experience that. But having the ability to do this in you know developing countries that are on the up and up is a really cool feature. Um, and I didn't even really think about that until he talked about it. So it's just cool to see him talk about that aspect of it. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to mention is the timeline that he gave for the company. Um, so he says right now they're working on mergers and, and acquisitions, potentially with some other companies, You know, also getting merged with, uh, with Tesoro Enterprises. Um, in quarter one, they're working on getting the OTC ticker changed to HMBL. So look for that in the future. By quarter two of 2021, they're gonna have audited company financials, um, which is awesome. I think we're gonna be looking forward to seeing you know, what they're doing, how much cash they're burning, and I guess how much revenue they're generating. So even when they're not profitable, because I don't expect them to be profitable, we can see how much revenue they're, they're bringing in and you know, what the growth prospects are for the stock. And then going down to quarter three, um, they're working on government, banking, wireless, and merchant partners. Um, they said they've got, you know, they already worked with a bank in Brazil, um, and there, there's a lot of governments that are potentially having more of their currency be digitally based, and this would be the perfect app for all those things. And again, if you can imagine like whole governments using Humble exclusively, like, I feel like that's a pretty big deal, but um, what do I know? And then uh, lastly, yeah, quarter four, they're gonna have the Humble Shareholder Conference. So I don't know if that's gonna be like the same thing uh, that's happening right now, um, today on this day or if it's gonna be you know something bigger uh, an in-person conference or something like that But it depends how the company goes in that time. But uh, Anyways, I was I was very impressed by what I saw on this call and this definitely Reinforces my positive outlook for the future of this stock. Um, so I definitely definitely bullish on this stock again If you haven't seen my other videos, I do think that this stock tends to suffer from some big sell-offs and maybe that's just a self self-fulfilling prophecy, but because it does that, I like to take advantage of these morning panics. So if this stock tanks, dip by it. That's pretty much what it comes down to um, because long term, I think this thing is going through the roof. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, turn on those post notifications, and I'll see you in the next video. But until then, let's grow better together. Preguntar, bebé, dime por qué te mientes. No puedes esconder todo lo que tú por mí sientes.